let me just take you back into the way back machine here because I think it's important. I, I just I've been playing true or false here with the media coverage. So let me just take you back uh, for a flashback on Joe Biden and oil drilling. Here it is. Number one. No more subsidies for fossil fuel industry. No more drilling on federal lands. No more drilling, including offshore. No ability for the oil industry to continue to drill, period. Ends. Okay. So when they say my policies are not causing a shortage of, oh, I don't know, power or gas, play this for your friends. One more time, please. Number one. No more subsidies for fossil fuel industry. No more drilling on federal lands. No more drilling, including offshore. No ability for the oil industry to continue to drill, period. Ends. Okay. And I think it really is very clear when he says, and I'm surprised this is no more. I think you're like, wow, he is. Now, so how far have they taken this? Our oil is so evil that we won't, we won't drill for it. We won't save our own life, but we will go to Iran. Now, listen to the deal that they are making with Iran. I want to just play one question, one question of Saki. Here she is on taking the uh, Islamic Revolutionary Guard off the terror list. Is the White House willing to delist the IRGC from the foreign terrorist organization list in order to get a deal with Iran? We're still in the negotiations, so I'm not going to speculate or outline from here what the final details look like. Okay. The answer to stop. The answer to that question is no. No. But that is not going to happen with this administration. We are emboldening every single dictator Every single bad guy, everybody who wants to destroy us, we are handing our freedom over to them right now. So now why are we doing things like this? Well, AOC, here she is this week in something incredibly brave for her to say. Here she is on fossil fuels. Today, I want to discuss part of this crisis that is all too often overlooked, Uh but whose evidence shows that there's a very meaningful connection here. The correlation between fossil fuel extraction sites and abductions and murders of indigenous women across the United States. Why is it that oil, gas and fossil fuel extraction sites have such a high correlation of violence and abduction against uh, Native women? Thank you for that question. Uh, Fossil fuel industry creates man camps or temporary settlements that often exist right outside the outside the borderlands of indigenous communities. As I stated earlier, uh, many tribes do not have tribal jurisdiction over non-native offenders, which a majority of these oil workers are. We know that when these man camps or temporary establishments are created, that there is an increase in violence in particular. Stop. I just I just want to say. So the solution is stop drilling. Stop building pipelines? Stop using fossil fuels? No. The solution is police the, quote, man camps. If there's a problem with crime, then we should focus on that. My house was broken in. They broke in. And I have another friend who somebody just broke the glass on their door. This guy came through my window. The other guy, I know, broke the glass on their door. We should ban all glass. That's not the answer. That's not the answer. And by the way, they're only doing this because of fossil fuels are killing the climate. And we're running out of time. Out of my one of my favorite clips this week. Don't you believe the science on climate change? We have, according to the best scientists in the world, we have 12 years 
What they're telling us is if we don't get our acts together in the next seven or eight years, oh, is wait. that the scientists are telling us 2020 that if we don't act incredibly boldly within the next six, seven years, mm. we're confronting climate change before it's too late within the 10 years that we have left to us. The world is going to end in 12 years if we don't address climate change. How dare you? It's, you know, that movie, The Day After Tomorrow? It's today. Wow. You have stolen my dreams. Science tells us we have nine years. It's 2020. There will be no future for the Bronx. There will be no livable future for generations. This is a climate damn emergency. Iowa, Nebraska, broad swaths, swaths of the Midwest are drowning right now underwater. Farms, towns that will never be recovered and never come back. We are talking about severe droughts which will prevent farmers in the Midwest from going the food mm. that we need. We're talking about extreme weather disturbances. The science is clear. But what this moment is about, Joe, is that the scientists are telling us they underestimated the severity of the crisis. In the 10 years that we have left to us, as the science and scientists tell us, as the answer we need, we need other uh -huh. industries to transition to get to ultimately a complete zero emissions by 2025. We need to cut global <laughs> emissions in half by 2030. It's not a question of re-entering the Paris of court. That's fine. Who cares? And it's been, nobody knows how to get rid of no that. How to get cows to stop farting. Exactly. Or burping. Uh, I don't think so. How much time do we have? How much time does the human race have? I can't imagine there will be a human on the planet in 10 years. We are in the beginning <laughs> of the mass though, extinction. If you're laughing, Joe, then you're missing the point. You're, this is an existential crisis. Bingo. You there you go. There you go. Are you going to listen to these people? I can't imagine that there is a single person that's going to be uh, living on Earth in 10 years. Really? Because that's 2026, according to him. Well, I think it's... Uh -uh. I mean, I could see maybe nukes being launched. That might be a big one. Uh, but mm. I think people even survive nukes. This is insanity. And we are now buying our oil because we won't drill for our own we're buying our oil it was bad enough with the saudis from the saudis we're encouraging iran we're buying it from putin what the hell is wrong with this this country answer nothing it's just no longer a republic 80 percent of people say uh we 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 want to drill and become more energy efficient and more energy independent, and we should build more power plants, 80%. Who's blocking that? Because it's not the people. I thought we were a republic. No, we're not. We haven't been for a while. That's a game. Those who are in power and have been empowered by this and many other administrations that have found their way around the Constitution through administrative law and Congress, who has now given up making any laws, and now with social media and ESG, do you really think your vote matters in that scheme? Why won't they listen to the people? Because they don't have to. They think they know better than you do. The only solution to this is local. You've got to get into your local communities. Do we have a second to go through the actual claim being made in that video? Yeah. The 2030 sure. thing? It comes not from scientists. It comes from politicians asking scientists to solve a very specific and hypothetical question. Basically, what will it keep uh, what will it take to keep climate change below an almost impossible target? Not surprisingly, scientists responded that doing so would be almost impossible and getting anywhere close would require enormous changes to all parts of society by 2030. This is from Bjorn Lomborg. Um, imagine a similar dis discussion on traffic deaths. In the United States, 40,000 people die each year in car crashes. 
If politicians asked scientists how to reduce the number of road deaths to zero, an almost impossible target, one good answer would be to set the national speed limit to three miles an hour. Probably nobody would die. But science, science is not telling us that we must have a speed limit of three miles an hour. It only informs us that if we want zero deaths, one simple way to achieve it would be to be through a nationwide, heavily enforced three mile an hour speed limit. Yet to make the trade off between a low speed limit and connected uh, uh, society is a uh, political question for all of us. And that's the that's what this 2030 claim from. They went to the scientists and said, OK, if we want to keep it at this level, what should we do? And they're like, well, you have to basically take a drastic action within the next five years. Well, but they're not saying you have to keep it at that level. That's something that politicians created to try to get this discussion in the direction and ultimately went. That's how dishonest all of this is. And you know it. You know it. Listen to the truth and do your own homework so you know what the truth is and you can help others understand it.